Would WWE shake things up with night two of the WWE draft tonight? Not really. Find out what we mean as we review Monday Night Raw for the week of October 14th, 2019 on WrestleDown. Hey guys, are you ready for your hot tag? Because if you are, it's definitely time to work. What's up, guys? I'm the Russell Gamer. Welcome back to another episode of Russell Down right here on WGS TV. And joining me on the Raw review tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you see him right here on the other side of your screen. It's the Studling Man, Ashley. Ashley, how you doing? Dick. That's the word of the night. Uh, now, just yeah, like well, in in so many war words. <laughs> But just like on Friday Night SmackDown this past week, WWE will get a bunch of celebrity appearances talking about the draft. Jim Crowler, Michael Che, and Colin Yost from Saturday Night Live, Al Roker, and a host of others, especially from the NBC Sports Channel as well, giving their thoughts on the WWE draft. Now, would it be enough to save the overall draft? Well, to answer that question, let's talk about Raw. Spoilers. No. <laughs> Raw opened up with Becky Lynch coming out saying she was ready to rip someone's arm off and was ready to go at it with Sasha Banks, but Banks was un unable to go, so the person she was going to face is someone she said she couldn't get rid of, and that person came out, who was Charlotte Flair. Charlotte expressed that she just wanted to be Becky's friend again before clocking her and saying how hard it is to be her friend. So, Bailey, who turned heel on the, this past week's Friday Night Smackdown against Charlotte, who was already heel. Anybody else lost in the confusion? Because I am right now. At this point, Bailey's gonna be faced, and WWE are gonna be like, "We, why, why are you people doing this? Why don't they just accept what we give?" And I'm like, "You idiots! You idiots! Absolute idiots!" essentially but for the match itself i thought it was a great match it felt like both of them had a counter for every counter they did charlotte targeted the leg of becky in an attempt to soften it up for the figure eight but every attempt charlotte made for the figure four becky was ready with a counter charlotte would connect with a spirit of becky but could not keep her down for the three count so she sat there started laughing for no reason and then becky rolled her up, rolled her up with a crucifix pin to pick up the win as Raw gets the first pick in the draft. And I have to say, Ash, I, I thought SmackDown this past week had a good, strong beginning. And I got to say, Raw tonight had a good, really good, strong beginning. Yes, but at the same time, it was sort of like... How many times do we have to see this? For the love of God. Well, originally it was supposed to be Becky and Sasha, but Sasha got injured and, and WWE Medical didn't clear her. Yeah, even though she was cleared and perfectly fine when she wasn't, but she was, but she wasn't. Confused. Well, it's time for the first round of the draft, and here are the picks. For Monday Night Raw, we have the Universal Champion Seth Rollins, no shocker. Charlotte, number one, number on two, the list. Brock Lesnar to SmackDown, number two on the list. So think about this, guys. One and two, Universal Champion, WWE Champion, which makes sense. Exactly. Charlotte Flair to Monday Night Raw. Hmm. Number three. The, the new day to number SmackDown. Three on the list. <laughs> Number three on the list, but keep in mind at the time she was SmackDown Women's Champion when these lists were drawn up. And we're talking the original list, not the alphabetized one, because it's got to be a mystery. Thankfully from here, it changed. And they realized, maybe we shouldn't just copy the list. Due day to number four. 
And then with Charlotte Flair being on Raw, of course we would have to have Andrade with Zelina Vega rounding out the last pick of the first round draft. So essentially to me, Ash, none of these draft picks surprise me. I mean, Andrade maybe. Well, well, you, well, you really can't say that with Charlotte Flair coming in. They announced Charlotte Flair first, and with WWE not if, wanting to break up if couples. We out, if we throw out the fuck buddy rule, <clears throat> I still think that's an interesting move. Clearly, Heyman is probably more a fan of Andrade than maybe Bischoff is. Because I'd have thought with the sort of Fox and wanting to go the Hispanic route, you'd have thought they'd have probably wanted Andrade or Mysterio or H Humberto. Oh, before we go As any further, stands, before we go any further, do we have to talk about the war rooms again? Yes, because amazingly they were in the same clothes and the same face paint 72 hours later so once got to wonder in there yeah with brilliant? armed yeah i think they were there in armed guards because the fact that the face paint guy wasn't allowed to take the face paint off of his face yeah that wasn't face paint that's like fucking glue yeah there is a scar to remind him that he was in this shitty bleak the one thing I will say that made it a bit different, but still shit, is we actually, this applies later on, but I might as well mention it here. We actually had a scene of a war room being like, oh, damn, <laughs> what happened? We should have got that person. Everything else was just like, throw the confetti. Yeah. Well, shit, hydro <laughs> bot. Because the. <laughs> actually the fox guy but he's dressed as shit hydro bot for tonight what do you think uh, well what i think is up next it was on friday accompanied by zelina taking on ali i kind of feel bad because ali has a good entrance and we didn't get to see it yes i'm a superhero nerd among other things now ali's had some good matches as of late and i'd say he had another one tonight with andrade uh, ali appeared to have things this is match stop did this match start in progress? Or did it start before commercial and I just missed it while I was away getting dinner? Uh, they, they had Andrade's entrance, then they went to commercial break, then they came back and the match started. No, because Ali, Ali was fighting with him immediately. Ali didn't get an entrance. Yeah, I know. I think. Well, yeah, he did not get an entrance, but... Anyway, Ali, Ali appeared to have things in control when he sent Andrade to the outside and was going for a dive to the outside when for the second time in this match, Zelina Vega got up on the ring apron to be a distraction, but much to her dismay, it didn't work out as Ali executed a flipping dive over her and to the outside on Andrade. Now, Ali would send Andrade back into the ring and behind the referee's back, Zelina would catch Ali in a hurricane rana. Here's the thing. Ali was left in a daze by the move or the fact that Zelina did that move in a dress was left wide open for Andrade to hit the hammerlock DDT to pick up the win. So I think the really oh, the only dress. real it looked like a dress to me. It was it was like hot pants. It was hot pants and sort of a, a long top. That was wrestling gear. I mean if she's going to get involved <clears throat> in doing spots like that she's got to be in a wrestling gear all the time uh, if she isn't you know she isn't doing a spot that night yeah <laughs> keep an eye on raw in the upcoming months is she in a suit yes probably not doing something is she in sort of gym gear style stuff yes she's probably doing something well i'll, I'll, I'll go back later on the dvr and and take a look for myself and if I have if to... this is the closest that we get to injured gender wrestling in WWE, I'm fine with it. Now it's time for the second round of draft picks. And we will start off with the Kabuki Warriors, the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. On Raw. On Raw. 
But essentially, Means but essentially now the Kyrie can face Becky Lynch. Yes, Daniel Bryan is going to SmackDown. Well, still on SmackDown. Still on SmackDown. Yes, uh, Rusev is on Raw. Which means we're going to have to continue with that sense. shitty storyline. It makes sense because of the storyline, but... The storyline is still shit. I mean, we'll get get to the storyline. We'll get to the um, storyline. The, sm <laughs> the SmackDown Women's Champion Bailey is the next pick. And rounding... It makes sense. And again, rounding up uh, this round, Alistair Black to Monday Night Raw. So, Which makes sense. Exactly. If Zelina Vega's on Raw, Alistair's on Raw too. That makes 100 oh, complete. Hey, now it makes even more sense. Yeah, you forgot it. You forgot <laughs> about forgot. they're married. I forgot. I forgot. Well, up next we have the Raw Tag Team Championships were on the line as Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler defended the titles against Eric and Ivar of the Viking Raiders. And just like last week, the Raiders jump-started the match and took it to the champs. Eric's running double knees might be the start for every one of their matches now. You never know. It looked like the Raiders were going to put the champs away early when Ivar connected with a top rope splash to Ziggler, but Roode pulled Ivar off of him. Root and Ziggler would eventually turn things around in their favor and started working over Eric pretty much in the same fashion as they did last week. Rude would connect with the glorious DDT on Eric, but Ivar would break up the pin. The Viking Raiders would strike the final blow as they hit the Viking experience on Ziggler to pick up the win as the Viking Raiders become the new Raw Tag Team Champions. And Ash, I gotta ask you, how about the promo they cut when they came back from commercial break? And I didn't think you could mention other promotions on Monday Night Raw, considering the fact they mentioned Ring of Honor. I don't think you can. But, you know, they got away with it, so... Uh... I mean, <laughs> would you want to be the guy to they tell two fun. guys like that that, hey, you can't say this on TV, and then they just stare at you down like you're a piece of meat? I wouldn't want to you tell them that. You grab Hey, if you you know when you grab Vince's arm, he suspends you for thirty days. Oh yeah. Hi Titus. Yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, it's time for the third round of the draft, and we're going to start off this round with Cedric Alexander going to Monday Night Raw. The well, I guess staying. Well, yeah, two degrees staying. The Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura, and I guess he's a package deal now with Sami Zayn because. They're staying on SmackDown. I mean, yeah, I, they didn't seem to confirm Sammy, but when they listed them, it had them there together. And plus, when they did the reveal the pick, they, when they did the reveal pick, Sammy was in the background. Okay. So even though he wasn't listed, I guess that means Zayn is SmackDown too. And, and a pick that surprised you when you saw it, because uh, we were talking during uh, Raw tonight, Umberto Carrillo to Monday Night Raw. Why did that surprise well, again, you? Fox wants to appeal to its Mexican demographic. Fox de Portes or whatever it's called. They made a big push about wanting, you know, a lot of Mexican sort of people on their brand to try and hook them in. You know, hence Velasquez, and then, oh wait, he's on the wrong brand. Yep. Which is weird because obviously, Monday Night Raw goes head to head with CMWL's big Monday Night show that they always have in uh, Arena Mexico or Arena Puebla. I can't remember if it's in Mexico or Puebla. One of the two. Like, you know, it's a show that gets viewed quite a lot on YouTube while this is going on. Sadly, I can't watch both, because I'm insane. <laughs> um, but despite the fact I watch AEW and NXT at the same time, so I'm truly insane. We both um, are. We both are. Ali was the next pick in the draft, going to SmackDown, and we rounded up this round with Eric Rowan going to Monday Night Raw. Not Rowan and Harper, 
Just Rowan. So whatever they were doing with Roman Reigns and Eric Rowan on SmackDown... He's now dead. Mm-hmm. He tried to kill him, but that is now water under the bridge. Maybe. My voice got weird. It's like the bloody Big Bopper. Hello, baby. Speaking of <laughs> dead, it was Eric Young, the former leader of Sanity, <laughs> taking on the Dutch destroyer Alistair Black. Now, this was essentially a squash match at best. Um, Alistair would lock his version of the Dragon Sleeper on Young, come to find out the name of it is called the Dark Ritual, as Al Alistair quickly picks up the win here. G again, Ash, this was essentially a squash match, and not really much to talk about here. It makes Black look strong, which is always good. Tommy and yeah, but do you think they're taking the Black Mask kick out of his moveset? Is that why they're introducing this new finisher, the Dark Ritual Submission? Maybe, but at the same time, it's always there if it needs to be used. Exactly, like with the Styles Clash and the Phenomenal Forearm and whatnot. Like with RKO and Punk Kick. Mm -hmm. That'd be the more better comparison. Well... Very akin to how it was the pedigree until the stomp got on ban mm -hmm. as well. Round four of the draft. First, a guy who was always known as WWE's best kept secret, Buddy Murphy, to Monday Night Raw. We'll be talking about him a little bit in a little while. Good. Robert Roode Good. and Dolph Ziggler as a package team to SmackDown. Then a pick I don't think anybody knew that was coming or even foretold of him coming to Monday Night Raw. Jinder Mahal. Yeah, that was just like... I, I'm amazed that he wasn't one of the, you know... If Cesaro is a fucking free agent, why is Jinder Mahal not? Please. And then the last two picks probably broke, bro broke up, I want to say, one of the best entertaining and comedy duos they have right now in WWE. Carmella to SmackDown and the 24-7 champion R-Truth to Raw. Well, it, it may do, but the thing is with the 24-7 title, I think the implication is it maybe cross brand I'm not sure so I don't know I guess only time will tell as to what WWE will do with it now backstage the street profits were doing their usual deal of putting things over on Raw when they would get confronted by the OC AJ Styles would pretend to be hyped for the street profits but then quickly diss them and said Raw belonged to the OC Gallows and Anderson and Styles would then attack the profits and leave them laying on the ground now, later on in the evening, we would see the Prophets emerging from the trainer's room, saying that they wanted to challenge the OC, and they needed to find themselves a partner, but they wanted to be like M. Night Shyamalan and keep it a mystery, some sort of a twist. Now, the implication being that we were supposed to get that match tonight, but it would never happen, so one has to figure, Ash, that whatever they're doing with this is going to happen next week. I love the fact it was like, we're going to do it tonight, we're going to do it tonight, and then nothing happened. So, what? I don't know what overran to cause it, but... Bastards. Well, up next... My, 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 I, the, 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 Go ahead. The confusing thing with Shyamalan, the, the, the confusing thing with Shyamalan is it was like, oh, we're going to do it, keep it a secret. What a twist! The deal with Shyamalan... The deal with Shia Man is it's a twist that in the majority of his films is predictable. Some of them it hasn't been. So I'm trying to work out who would be... I mean, Kevin would make sense. Kevin Owens. Yeah. Because he is... And, you know, Kevin and AJ could be very fun. Oh, yeah. 
Well, up next it was Ricochet taking on Shelton Benjamin. Can anyone tell me when was the last time we saw Shelty B on TV, let alone on a Monday Night Raw match? Anyway, Ricochet would look for the Ooh. 630, but Shelton would counter. Smackdown? I think. Oh, wait, he was in the King of the Ring tournament. He lost in the first round to a man that is now known yeah. as Shorty Shorty. Gable. The Shorty. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Shelton would try to counter by arm dragging Ricochet off the top rope, but he landed on his feet in true superhero fashion, and then would hit the recoil on Shelton to pick up the win. Now, I don't know what's, what's going on with Ricochet these past couple of weeks, but he's been in back-to-back -back weeks where he's just been in very bland, basic matches. I mean, yes, but I'm just trying to... Ricochet needs to look strong. Shelton Benjamin was there sort of as a jobber, if you will, but... And you know who of all people There's was tweeting about him? I, I don't know if you saw this, but Mia Yim was actually tweeting about Shelton Benjamin being on oh, Monday Night Raw. Oh, God, Mia Yim. Mia Yim and Shelton B have history. In a good way and a bad way. Um, so, you know, it's it's the thing that they have between each other, like roasting each other sort of thing. Yeah, They're pretty good friends. So, you know, don't read into it too much. There is one thing that we missed. Can't be, I can't be bothered to throw a flag or whatever. Um, the promo earlier from Seth... I mean, he's talking about going to look for the Firefly Funhouse and going fiend hunting. He's burn it down. Yeah, fiend hunting, he's going to burn it down. Which resulted a couple of times in the night with, like, breaking news ticker tapes at the bottom saying, Seth Rollins is going to look for the fiend. I don't... I'm going... I don't this know. isn't CNN or Fox News. Why is that there? I don't know why it was there, and I don't know why the next segment was there with Lana <laughs> on a massage table. She tell the masseuse who was tending to her feet that she liked it harder. <laughs> Booby loosely would then show up wearing a towel. Then we hear Lana saying, "No, no, 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 no." You know, the masseur was basically saying it's just the right amount of pressure and you went, no, I like it harder. Cut to commercial and it's like, wait, what? So then, you know. Then he came back. The mass, the masseur, no, yeah, we kept, we came back to the thing and the lady masseur is still doing the job and she's like, you know, I, I can, I can do a deep, I can do a deep tissue massage if you want to. And Lana goes, Yes, I like it deeper, and I'm like... <laughs> why are we turning... Why are we turning this into... Are we doing this to actually make Pornhub and all these porn sites go... Bro, what the fuck? We do more believe... We do more believable storylines than this, and all we do is people fucking. You're a wrestling show, and you shit at it. You, you know, we should be down here and you should be up there. As it stands with our production amount, we're up there. You're down there. <laughs> Loosely had on a towel, started massaging Lana without her knowing, said Loosely had soft hands, and then he was better the than Rusev. Yeah, and was better yeah. than Rusev. Loosely then picked up the towel and gave a pedo smile as Lana flipped over on the table. <laughs> Lana basically turned and Lashley was like. Now, before going any further, I just want to state this for I the mean, record. It didn't look like that. It was just a smile, but it was the smile of, like, this man has had sexual contact with 10 year old kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? The crowd laughed at it. <laughs> we, did. we did too. We did too. 
the, the crowd laughed at it. You know, I, I don't know why Lashley's agreed to this. You know, has he got, has Vince got pictures of him naked? <laughs> uh, no. Before we go any further, I just want to say this for the record. Oh, God. Okay, now, I, before we go any further, I just want to say this for the record. All right? This is just me, but I would never let anyone touch any part of my body for any reason. I don't care what other people say about it. Never getting a massage. Ever. Never. There's nothing anyone can tell me. To, you know, there's not a thing anyone can say that'll make me want to get naked in front of another person, put a towel on my ass, and then let that person touch me. No. The great, the great bit was when Lashley was doing the massage in the legs, <laughs> and it was going up the towel, and I'm like, oh my god, is this turning into fucking sexual molestation? Is this a Me Too moment? Is it like, this is... Well, you know what they probably had before they did them. You know what they had probably why, before they is did this that? Why Jeffrey, is this why Jeffrey Epstein died? Oh, like, God. Oh, we are not getting political here. We are not getting political with any it's kind of conspiracies or with anything like it's that. Not political. It's not political. Okay, there's political A little things, bit of the bubbly. But the guy was accused of uh, sexual misconduct with other women and then he disappeared and then he died in prison to just somehow avoid getting sort of you know trialed on it and whatever that isn't political that's conspiracy <laughs> theories with jesse ventura <laughs> <laughs> yeah up next it was the contract signing between tyson fury and braun Strowman. Strowman would get on the mic and restated that come crown jewel that he was going to slam him in the middle of the ring and hand fury his first loss ever Tyson would respond that he and his kids were a huge fan of Strowman's, but regardless, come their match, he was going to knock Strowman out. Strowman would then, after they finish uh, signing the contracts, Strowman and both Fury got up, and Strowman, with a double axe handle to the table, broke the table in two. Then, I guess, in a joking, mocking style, <laughs> he took the, the pen, he was going, Argh! Oh yeah, I broke it. <laughs> and, and then and then he walked away to the camera, and you can tell he's just like, "I'm a fucking shark." Like, he's doing it on purpose. It's like brilliant. I loved it. I will tell you that Tyson Fury won me over with that. He won me over with that. I thought that was hilarious. The Gypsy King heading to. So Round five of the draft. Number one. Samoa Joe to Monday oh, no. Night Raw. Hang on, no, no. We need to mention the the Al Rogue a bit. Oh god, do we have to? Yes, because he said anything can happen. The new day could get split up. Did but they got drafted an hour and a half ago. So how? I don't know. I, I guess I guess Al may have, may have had a little bit of this. A little bit of the bubbly. Before recording. <laughs> you never know. Yo. Oh, my. Sorry, I'm just noticing from the notes that I'm getting here from F4W. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dio Madden. When that stuff happened with Tyson and the pen, bloody Madden went, did you see the state of that pen? <laughs> Dio, 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 Dio. He's one of us. He's one of us. I mean, uh, uh, and I want to mention it here as well. The Jerry Lawler dad joke commentary is getting pretty old fast, and it's getting tiresome and really bad it's okay sort of every once in a while you know like on the pre-shows and whatever but every week i can't wait for him to flub and do one big fuck up in saudi arabia and then the saudis are gonna want him dead because i swear that might happen in which case oof 
Oh god, if he keeps if he keeps talking on Crown Jewel about Ziggler nearly killing him with the elbow drop, yeah, he'll be like, <laughs> well, well, get the social media account with all the tweets about all the all the atrocities that Saudi are apparently doing. The social media person will be going, la la la, I'm not listening, la la la. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, well, round five of the draft, as you've already heard, number one, Samoa Joe, no, no. to Monday Night Raw. Number two, The Miz, to uh, Friday Night SmackDown, or staying no. on Friday Night SmackDown. No, 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 no. He was Raw, remember? He switched in April. Okay. Every single draft the WWE has done since they introduced this four years ago, Miz has changed every time. This is getting a problem. Yeah, it kind of is, because you, you never know what they're going to be doing with him. A new face coming to Monday Night Raw from 205 Live, Akira Tozawa. Drafted to Monday Night Raw. Then we have King Corbin to Friday Night SmackDown. And then we round out this round of the draft with Shelton Benjamin being drafted to Monday Night Raw. So I gotta say, Ash, a pretty interesting round of selections. Yeah, no, I just I just I just saw important tweets from a certain fiend. Oof. Well, up next it was Buddy Murphy taking on Cedric Alexander. If I'm not mistaken, these two have been in a feud before over on two oh five live for the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh yeah. Yeah. No oldie. And a goodie. Yep, since then Murphy's become a breakout superstar, having two amazing matches. One with Roman Reigns and the other with Daniel Bryan, even picking up the win over the former WWE champion. Cedric pulled out the stops to try to take it to Murphy, but things turned in Murphy's favor when he first connected with a super kick to Cedric's face when he was on the top rope, which led to the power bomb, and then he would go on to hit Murphy's Law to pick up the win. So, a str I have to say, a strong outing, Ash, for both men, for both Murphy and Alexander. And it needed to be showcasing them off well and shows you that, you know, they should be given a chance at some of the supplemental titles. I'm looking at you, AJ. Oh, wait. AJ just makes jokes about concussions. The final round of the draft. First pick. Rey Mysterio to Monday Night Raw. No, well, actually. Well, you mean you mentioned that which sort of ruins it. Worth noting that we had Saudi promo here <sighs> where they suddenly announced Seth versus Bray in a Fool's Count Anywhere match. Despite the fact that Seth's in Team Hogan. Which complicates things. And then on top of that... The Team Hogan, Team Flair thing now has... I think mean, it's Ricochet on Team Hogan now. Yes. And then uh, and La Bobby Lo Booby Loosely and um, Shinsuke, Nakamura. Yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know why. They're just there. Reasons? No, Saudi is the reason. Sorry, Saudi. Now back to the back to the final round of the draft. Yeah. Up next, Ray, I hate this name. Ray Mysterio move. Ray Mysterio move, which doesn't make sense though. That, that needs to be, again the Mexican connection. You'd have with, now this leads me into sort of fantasy booking here because obviously. The, dub, the Universal title is into brand. Considering Mysterio and Velasquez's link, 
What if Crown Jewel is going to be where um, Seth drops the title to Fiend and Brock drops the title to Velasquez? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know how that would turn out if WWE I mean, even... The colors on, they just changed the colors on them. The universal title becomes the blue belt and the WWE Championship becomes the the red belt. Which would be weird because the WWE title is supposed to be like the top title in the company with the universal title being second although you wouldn't know it. So... Uh, we'll see. Yep. Nope. But anyway. That Shorty! Shorty Gable. Again, I don't like this name. I don't. It's it's stupid. I mean... I don't know. Maybe WWE sees something. Maybe somebody out there sees something in the Shorty gimmick. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Next. Titus O'Neil to Monday Night Raw. Followed by Elias to Friday Night Smackdown. Now, I, I thought Elias and Gable were supposed to be doing something when uh, at, at the end of one of Gable's matches, uh, he appears on the Titan Tron and then sings a song about uh, Gable being short. And then after that, nothing. Well, I guess it's still, well, because he got injured. That's why. Oh. That's what fucked it up. And then rounding out Elias. this draft round and the final draft round, Liv Morgan. So apparently Liv Morgan is somewhat relevant. About. She didn't get forgotten about. She's good. Um, however, it, it's worth noting, and it happened, I think, with Humberto as well. With a lot of them, there's like, you know, facts about this star, you know. They're the champion, you know. Corbin is king of the ring. And Mysterio, sort of great. Chad Gable, King of the Ring finalist. Titus O'Neil, you know, ambassador or whatever it is. Elias was just Elias. Liv Morgan was just Liv Morgan. Humberto was just Humberto. It's like, there might be some interesting stuff to tell you about them. We're not going to tell you it. But... Well, up next, it was the Kabuki Warriors. Hang on. It's worth noting um, that means that the free agency pool, including the people that haven't been signed, which I don't know, I, do we need to update on that? I think I can't even remember. Yeah, there was, there was an update on it. I, I, they did update it from the, the SmackDown one on Saturday on WWE.com. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see uh, the. Uh, the news about it with the uh, I was gonna say the supplemental draft that another thing there we go the additional draft picks so uh, Eric Young is unsurprisingly the clue might have been on these on the show mm. EC3 is also on there which a lot of people have said because he's going to be on main event every week. <laughs> uh, and, and Sin Cara. So again, all the Mexican talent is on Raw when you thought they would have been on Smack. Eric doesn't like Mexicans. Is he racist? What is going on? And then uh, Apollo Crews, Gulak, Slater, Tamina and B Team rule on SmackDown. For once, Heath Slater wasn't forgotten about. So, Cesaro is still dead to the world, apparently. As are AOP. So, those video packages did a lot of world and good, didn't they? <laughs> Who are we? Apparently nobody knows because we haven't been drafted. Sad face. 
the Iconics, which is surprising considering, you know, they were champions, what, a month ago, <laughs> practically? Yep. Uh, Luke is not confirmed. Whether he will tag with Rowan, show up with Rowan, I don't know. I'd have thought so, but who knows? Fire and Desire. L Liv Morgan makes him Fire and Desire don't. That's how green Mandy Rose is. And I feel sorry for Sonya because of that. Drake Maverick. Just depressing. <laughs> uh, Dana Brooke. That's all depressing. Uh, Hawkins and Ryder. Hawkins and Ryder. Probably too busy with toys. Oh, wait. No. They want action figures? Maybe they'll give their grandmother bed sores. Oh, and Billy's wincing. <laughs> Oh, 2K20 <laughs> is going to be fun. He said sarcastically. Um, no way, Jose. Has he uh, has he kidnapped anybody yet? And also, Sarah Logan did not get drafted. Now, if and if I anything, if anything, with her being married to Eric of the Viking Raiders, uh, they would. And if WWE d does still stick with that not breaking up couples thing. Keep yeah. her on Raw. It'd have to be. It'd have to be real. Yep. Well, up next, it was the Kabuki Warriors taking on Natalia and a partner of her choosing. Natalia got on the mic and said she wanted a partner who pushed her to the limit. And much to my surprise, we thought it would be Ronda Rousey. It was Lacey Evans. The more important so thing Natalia to note here... Natalia's turned heel. Or Lacey's turn against a team which apparently. No, well, no, because Lacey was still acting like a spoiled bitch. Well, and then yeah. Asker and Kyrie saying they're supposed to be heel. But again, the crowd don't give a damn. The more important Especially thing. When Asker, although she didn't use Green Mist tonight, I guess it was used elsewhere because Kana's coming back. Oh yes. Green was coming out of her eyes and then painted on her face. And needless to say, I like it. Because it fits. If they're going to oh, turn oh, them God. heel, it fits. The Kabuki's first... Now we just need to paint, now we just need to paint her up like Kushin Thunder Liger. Oh. <laughs> the Kabuki's first had Lacey Evans on the ropes for this match until she made a tag Nat Natalia, who took it to the Empress of Tomorrow, even at one point locking the sharpshooter on her, but thanks to Kyrie's help, by breaking it up, she didn't tap out. Lacey would get tagged in and went at it with Kyrie on the outside, but the Pirate Princess would stun her with an amazing spinning backfist, and even showed the replay of that backfist landing right on the square on the cheek of Lacey Evans and a running blockbuster. Kyrie would go up for the the insane elbow, and as she did, Asuka would make the tag. Kari would look for it, but Lacey would counter with the woman's right. However, Kari wasn't the legal uh, woman. It was Asuka who came up behind Lacey and rolled her up for the win. Now, we didn't get much of a celebration win for the Kabuki Warriors, because immediately after that, with less than two minutes left on Monday Night Raw, it was the Firefly Funhouse. But we need to talk about the women's match because well yes please your thoughts it wasn't great and i don't want to point fingers but lacy <laughs> oh i mean yeah the crowd didn't give a damn because they've been there for three hours a weird choice for that to be main event in all things in all honesty um if anything the match needed to be a, a bit shorter so that way they can could have given more time for the whole segment with yeah. with bray seth and the firefly funhouse but as it stands they only had two minutes to do what they needed to do yeah and the, and the crowd was sort of giving it a damn also worth noting before we get to the finale when they they went to the panel of Beth and Booker and Marshall, um, but they talked about rumors of a blockbuster trade, which will be exclusively uh, talked about 
on the Fox Sports 1 show after the baseball game. WWE Mark. Backstage, I believe it's called. Yeah, that might be an interesting thing to try and catch and see what it supposedly is. Whether it's whether it's Bray actually going to Raw, which ruins the plan. But I, I just think that because they've been pushing the whole real life stuff and they've been pushing like hell about big trades, I'm expecting something's going to happen. As am I. But now for the finale of Raw. Some of the Mex oh, well, maybe some of the Mexican people go to SmackDown for Fiend to... Possibly. And then everything is right in the world. But now for the Firefly Funhouse with less than two minutes left <laughs> on Raw. Two minutes. Keep that in mind, folks. Well, two minutes. Well, the, f the first two syllables were correct. Bray would praise Seth and his qualities. Randall and Rabbit would show up scared, saying that he saw Seth and that he was mad, but Bray would assure Randall and Rabbit that he was safe. However, Bray would be proven wrong as Seth appeared from behind and attacked Bray and began destroying the funhouse. Bray would get up looking angry, and then it quickly changed to him being confused and asked Seth why, why he was doing this. Seth responded with a right hand, looked at the camera, said burn it down, and set fire to the funhouse. And as it was burning, we could hear the fiend laughing and it flipped back and forth between that two scenes of the fiend. He let Finn Balor's photo catch fire. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> and, then, and then at the same time... Are we actually trying to turn Seth heel because of a fucking botch by the booking committee? I really don't know how to answer that question. So, with that being said, let's go to over. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, breaking news. Uh, Bray Wyatt tweeted, Rambling Rabbit was taken from us tonight. Super unnecessary cripple arson attack. R.I.P. Brother. So he's died again. Dear Lord, this 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 guy I, has I, more lives than the. Fuck I, I think we need a moment of silence for Rambling Rabbit. There it was. No. <laughs> um. Also, I wanted to, you know, Seth. I forgive you. Is my nature to do so, no matter how upset I get. Not everyone here feels this way, however. Quick question: How did you find it? Are you dead? <laughs> what? You can only find the Firefly Funhouse if you died. died. What? Is is this is this some jive at Jerry Lawler for dying in that fucking heart attack? <laughs> as, I don't know. as we remain terribly confused by that tweet, let's go to overall score and thoughts. I'm not really sure WWE really shook anything up with the draft this year. I mean, the first two picks tonight were the Universal Champion to Raw and the WWE Champion to SmackDown. What makes even less sense is the Focus Count Anywhere match at Crown Jewel with Seth defending the Universal title against The Fiend. Would WWE Creative be this dumb as to not only put the title on Fiend, but put both of your top titles on one brand? I'm not saying putting the title on Fiend would be wrong, but he's on a different brand right now. Leaving Raw without a top title wouldn't make any sense. Now, as for Raw this week, Becky vs. Charlotte was a great start to the show. None of the draft picks surprised me, to be honest. Zelina Vega? I'll pay her money to give me a Hurricane Rana. Enough said. Uh, Viking Raiders winning the Raw Tag Team titles makes sense. Especially even more sense now that Rude and Ziggler got drafted to SmackDown. Anyone else miss Sanity? I'm sure Eric Young is missing that gimmick. It was good to see Shelton Benjamin back on TV again. Lana and Loosely on a massage table. Kill me now, please! 
taste of- Whoa, whoa, No. I'll get- you can get back to that. You don't want massage and whatever, but you don't mind Selena doing a Rana run you. So, double uh, uh, as much. No, a uh, Hurricane Rana is not a massage. It is. It On what is warm. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you not see no. what Charlotte did to <laughs> Becky tonight? The Andrade special. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Tyson Fury won me over with the breaking the pen. Murphy and Cedric definitely brought their A-games tonight. I love Asuka's new look, and seeing Lacey Evans as Natalia's partner was definitely a surprise to me. And why did you have to burn down this fun house, Seth? Overall score of Raw this week gets a 2.75 out of 5, with best match of the night going to Becky versus Charlotte's boobs. I'm, I mean Charlotte. With uh, worst segment of the night going to the Lana and Loosely massage table incident, which should have never been on TV to begin with. Ash, over to you. I'm slowly dying inside. Epitomizes the review. Um, <laughs> best match was Charlotte versus Becky. Worst, worst match or segment? Um, let's be honest. The entire draft. The presentation of it, the whole angle, didn't work. As a sports thing, it didn't work. As a draft, like on previous terms, it didn't work. It, it, sa it says a lot that the only thing that saved the massage thing from doing it was the pedo smile <laughs> making me laugh my ass off, so I can't put it in. I can't put it as the worst bit of the night. <laughs> this is the worst draft we draft we've ever had, and remember, we've had them um, on and off since what two thousand and sixteen. More, more often than not, you know, well, two thousand and two was the original, wasn't it? Uh, maybe. With Raw and SmackDown, with uh, with Eric Bischoff, you know, Linda and... McMahon was there. Linda McMahon, Linda McMahon was there when it was Vince and Ric Flair in charge of Raw and SmackDown. I'm pretty sure, something like that. Something to like that effect. But uh, anyway, guys. That's been our thoughts on Monday Night Raw this week. What we want to know from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. What are your overall scores? What are your thoughts on the draft? Did any of the picks surprise you? And seriously, did we have to see Lana and Lashley on TV again? I mean, it was a complete fucking waste of time. We definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, be sure you slam that like button. Like a champ, and if you guys want to see more of Wrestle Down right here on WGS TV, you know the two ways. You gotta do it. You gotta leg drop the subscribe button and hit that bell icon to turn on notifications. That way you guys will never miss out on another video right here on my channel. So with my special thanks to the Studley Man Ashley, who's hiding something. I'm your friendly neighborhood wrestle gamer. <laughs> Saying I got black raw. Bye guys! Where Bobby? Well, where? <laughs> we don't need to see your dick. <laughs>